Hi there everyone, Tom here from OneSite Solutions. In this short video, I'm going to show you an exciting new module that we've developed at OneSite Solutions. And we call it the OSS Easy History Export Tool. And what it serves to do is make it very quick and easy for anyone to pull numeric histories, typically with a metadata use case in mind, out of a Niagara station, be it a JACE, a supervisor, or a third-party Niagara-based controller, um, and generate a single multi-column CSV based upon those histories and upload it to a destination FTP or SFTP server. Now previously this, if you wanted to combine um, multiple histories, could be 10, could be 100, could be 1000 into a single multi-column file, um, the only way to do this besides a couple of other third-party drivers I know of um, was with a lot of complex wire sheet logic very time consuming and very fragile due to a lot of moving parts you then have to couple that into a report service file recipient and then another third party module to send it to a destination server the oss easy history export module serves to allow you to export any number of numeric metadata style histories as a single multi-column csv either manually or on an interval containing as little or as much data as you want, send it to a destination SFTP or FTP server um, on an interval or manually, like I say, in under five minutes. So I'm going to show you this process now. So first thing to note, this is a licensed module. So get yourself a license, get your system licensed. Um, you then need to download the module. Here we are, I have the zip here. Extract it and drag the modules into your module directory. At this point, you then need to restart the Niagara platform service and the station, also Workbench if you've already got it open. I've already done all of that. Once everything's back up and running, make a connection to your station. Now open the palette, search for the OSS Easy History Export module. Drag the component onto the config node and double click on it. Now from the top down we've got some options, um, first one to concern yourself with is transfer type. It, this supports SFTP which is SSH or standard FTP. This demonstration is going to use FTP. You then enter the FTP server details which you should have been provided with. FTP control port is 21. The remote path, now if you are uploading to a server um, and you need to put your file in some subfolders, you can specify the full path in here. Um, but I'm uploading into the root directory of this FTP server on this account. So you just place the file name as the last thing in your path. Timeout there, you can set if you have a bit of a flaky connection or a bit of a slow connection. At this point, save and you need to click on history list. This is a standard discovery window. You can click on find histories and this will display every um, history within your station. Now, uh, like I said, this works with numeric histories only. Um, you can multi-select using shift like that. So you could take everything if you've got thousands of meters in here. You can use control to multi-select if you want to pick individual ones out. Um, I've got a few kilowatt hour histories here, which are real meters. So I'm going to take that one, that one, that one. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And you simply drag into the database window at the bottom. Now double click on multi history export again. And if you expand history list, you'll see your histories in there. Now we've got two options for controlling the amount of data that lands in this CSV file. One is with a raw number of rows, so uh, you can limit it by rows. If you know your histories are 15 minutes and you want an hour worth of data, four rows. Um, or we can do time limit. It prioritizes whichever is set smaller. So I'm going to say for this example, I want to take 24 hours worth of readings every 24 hours. So I'm going to do that with time as opposed to rows. So put a huge number in rows, so that's effectively ignored. And put 24 hours in time limit. Row order is ascending. There's a few different timestamp formats available to you here. We've put some in that we've used for our testing. Um, ISO 8601, the Epoch, which is a millisecond count up. A Niagara platform format carries across whatever um, time, details and zone is set in a Niagara platform. 
and BASIC, which is a simple timestamp format which we've used for testing against eSight. Timestamp file is an important box because if you are uploading to a destination energy system that doesn't ingest files in real time, um, it's going to expect there to be a collection of files there for it to ingest when it does. If you're uploading without a timestamp appended, this metadata.csv file will overwrite the existing metadata.csv file that you uploaded previously. Thus, you have the potential to lose data. If you tick the um, true button on timestamp file, it will stick a timestamp at the end of that file name, meaning it's a new file every time and you won't lose anything. I'm going to set my auto export to true. And I'm going to save. And the second I've saved, it's, also, it's already done its first export. But at this point here, after I just refreshed, you'll see I've now got an update period field appear. So I'm going to select 24 hours in there. Hit save. And this has already done an upload. We can do a manual trigger if we we'll right click on multi history export, actions export. So if I just take you to the FTP server in question, and now we've got our couple of uh, initial exports we've done. So if I just download this one, and here we have our multi-column CSV with our selection of histories. Um, you'll see nice uniform timestamps down the side. Quick note on this, that if you you do have the ability to combine histories that have different intervals, so typically you might have 15 minutes or half an hour or a mix of both. This software does a bit of logic in the background if it, if it comes across that scenario. And it takes the smallest interval, so let's say it's 15 minutes, and if you've got half an hour histories in there as well, it'll compare differences, insert blank records, etc., insert duplicate records with no changes, to ensure that you have a uniform, um, a uniform timestamp with your multiple meters in it. Um, the cool thing about this piece of software is I've only got a handful of histories here as well, but the process you've just seen is just a matter of an extra number of seconds for you to select hundreds more histories or a thousand, um, and you'll generate the same file. Um, t typically, it's quite good to do an initial upload, um, so do a really high record count if we just have a look at um, this again. So if you're... If you're um, installing this for the first time on a site and you want to make sure you you export all of the data in your histories you can do so if you just put um, a massive number in time and row um, do an export with that you've then got a csv file that contains all of your data up to that point and then you can set the regular and ongoing um, format um, from then on so uh, that wraps this one up, guys. Um, I'm really, I have to say, I'm really excited by this module because being able to efficiently get mass amounts of metadata in an easy to deal with format and importantly pushed out in an outbound direction. I know we have tools like Obix and whatnot, but they are inbound based and a bit dated now. Um, but this makes possible a, um, a deployment that would, would have previously took days. Um, and brings it down into five ten minutes so thank you for watching guys i've been tom at one site solutions please subscribe to the channel and i hope to hear from you soon